my great, great honor to introduce the person that you're all here for, after all, uh, who needs no introduction, Kelsey Ballerini. Hi. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Julianne. Oh, you're so badass. Thank you. I mean, the, the bio, I'm like, okay. I'm scared. Well, okay. Um, your I'm bio so excited. Cool. Yep, me too. I'm me so too. excited. It's uh, absolutely. We have lots of things for you, especially <laughs> this one. There's three of these, but especially this one. We really. <laughs> This is this is a special night we've been planning for a while. So, oh. Kelsey, I I mean, everybody here knows the reaction to this monumental piece of work that we all just witnessed this has been huge. It's been huge. Are you um? How do you feel about that? How do you feel? Has it been a surprise? Were you expecting it? What's I think in total, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard me say a, a portion of this before, but like. In total, Welcome Matt, the project, the short film, um, it was not meant to be what it's become. And I think I've been spending ever since February 14th really playing, like playing catch up. Um, not Heinz, like catch up. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, um, this is the most selfish I've ever been making a project ever. I <laughs> Selfish. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it was, it was like the project itself, writing it was so, um, it was so quiet and it was really pure and it was really selfish. And um, putting it out was kind of a choice that I really had to kind of uh, have a big conversation with myself about. And then it was very much so once I got right with it and I knew my purpose behind it and my intention, I was like, hey team, um, I know we just put out like an actual album. Um, but I have another one, and I need you to let me do this, and I know it sounds crazy, and I also want to do a short film, not a music video, a 20-minute short film, and I just committed to it, um, and so watching it connect like it has and watching it kind of become um, just this this wave of honesty and connection and... Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having more of those conversations in my life than I ever have, and... That's why I keep showing up for it. It was this thing that I wanted to just put out and release and put a visual to and put out there and be like, see ya. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I haven't done that. And it's been, uh, it's been a really beautiful, beautiful process to not be able to do that. And you talk about it being silent and quiet when you were writing it. Yeah. Um, what the pain that you must have been going through when you were writing it the, the things that you were writing about uh, must have taken such a lot of vulnerability for you to to kind of dig out. When did you start putting pen to paper to really well, dig into that? The album and the short film have different answers. So mm -hmm. the album, um, people have asked me since I put it out, you know, is this a reaction record? And um, it's, it's yes and no. I'm going to be so brutally honest. Um, Good. <laughs> <laughs> so take that out, you may. But the truth is yes and no. I think there was something that that made me react and write Blindsided. Blindsided was the first song that I wrote for this record. Um, and so that was a reaction. The rest of it was therapy. And I think as I continued to kind of dig into myself and dig my heels into processing my life at that time, um, I, I just realized that there was so much more to the story even before Blindsided. You know, I had to go back to be able to, to move forward. And mm. I was I was really, I was writing as I was coming to, if that makes sense. Um, and then with the short film, I've never told this before, but the truth is I went, I think it was December 10th or 11th, and I was with my friend Megan, and we were driving to Memphis, and I was going to a wedding. And it was, you know, the first wedding I'd been to since I made this life change. And I didn't really know how to feel, and um, I felt it all. And then on the way back, 
driving from Memphis to Nashville. I was like, hey, Meg, I hadn't even told my closest friends I was working on this. Like, it was so close to the chest. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm writing a record. Can I play it for you? And I played her Welcome Mat top to bottom. And as I was playing it, after experiencing that the night before, um, I just started having all these visuals of when I was writing those songs, what was I... What were the moments that were coming to mind? What was I seeing? And then the contrast of what I w had just experienced, I was like, I'm watching it come to life. And we ended playing the record in the car, and I was like, Meg, I think I think I just made a music video in my head for all of these. And so she was driving, and the whole time we were just going back and forth, and I was writing it down, and I was like, are stacks of plates crazy? She was like, that's sick. And I was like, sick. And then, like, <laughs> I was like, but the, everything needs to be a metaphor. Like, it can't be, like, it can't be very dramatic. Like, I want it to feel stark. I want it to feel like it felt. I want it to feel sad. I want it to feel like there's tension, there's plea, there's all the complexities of these emotions that you feel when you go through a breakup or a life change or whatever it is. So um, it was on the way back from Memphis to Nashville that this whole thing came to be. Wow. I mean, I've got two separate questions that come out. Okay, I'm ready. Um, one is, did you have any issues with, um, like, making, bringing out the vulnerability of it? It must be very difficult to be so exposing when you're, A, writing, and then thinking about the visuals as related to the truth of what you were going through. Was that something that you were a little bit afraid of diving into, or did you embrace that? I think I was afraid of everything. So I think adding another fear to my plate at that point wasn't that scary. <laughs> that sounds dark. It's true. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think the truth is I started writing songs when I was 12 because my parents were getting divorced and I'm an only child mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. Like I didn't know how to make sense of it. I didn't know where to put my very big feelings that I had about my life at that point. And I started writing songs and that became the place that has been my safe keeper of all my, all my thoughts, all my feelings, the good ones, the bad ones, the confusing ones, all of it. And so I think it, I, it was like a, a way of me kind of coming back to the purity of why I started writing songs. Because along the way, the last 10 years, and yes, it's 10 years. <laughs> there, there, there happened, the, there's this filter that happens and it's super unintentional and now I'm undoing it. But like when I'm writing songs, I think like, will this sound good on the radio or will this look good for a live production? I think of these things now because it's all part of my job. It's all part of what I do, you know? and. I hope it doesn't lose the pureness of like the heart of the songwriter in me, but it probably does to an extent until this project. And so this was, that's why I say it was selfish. It, I didn't think about anything, anything. Um, but that makes it authentic. Yeah. And it also, yeah. the thing that it makes me think about is we all spend so much time kind of trying to project our lives and how perfect they are and on Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. and. <laughs> This is great because it shows, you know, that people are real. <laughs> yeah. People have real emotions and we all go through it. And yeah. so hats off to you for Thanks. for doing that. Thanks. On all behalf for, for all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I would like to ask you a question about those plates. <laughs> yes. They looked heavy. very, very heavy. They were. How did you hold them for so long? That's a great question. I like they put two plates on each hand, it would have gone. What, what? I mean, it was crazy. Um, that was my favorite metaphor of the whole the whole film. Um, and in 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 set design and props, I'm mm -hmm. speaking your language. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was this massive table, and they were they were like taping all these plates together. So when he came in, um, Orosh is his name, and he might be here, or it's at some point you might get to meet him, the male counterpart in this film, he's amazing. Um, but uh, there were like four at a time, all kind of glued and taped together, so they looked very unstable, but they were stable, and they were heavy. Ooh. Yeah. I was impressed. Thank and, you. Uh, there was one other little thing. The toast was burnt. Yes, it was. Did anybody else notice that? I was like, Everything's so on purpose. <laughs> I thought Julian, so. Julian, everything's on purpose. Tell me about it. 
<laughs> well, I, I would like, there are certain things that I think are, they, they should be left up for interpretation. And um, that one, I think everyone can kind of Aww. put their own mind to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you after. I did. <laughs> I did notice <laughs> in the credits that the whole thing was uh, written and produced by you and one other woman. Yeah. Was that, how did that come about? Yeah, the the whole record was. Um, so basically, I think because it was so uh, vulnerable and all actively happening, um, it wasn't hindsight, it was very um, current. I was coming home from the first leg of the Heart First tour, um, and like not coming home, you know, I was like in between like living with my mom and all this stuff, and so I just I had to write about it. And one of my closest, dearest friends is a songwriter producer who I worked on Subject to Change with, um, Heart First, doing my best, weather, all this stuff. And I think because we were real life friends, I felt safe enough to go help me here. Like, I don't want to talk about this with anyone else, but I just, like, I have to make this for me, and, like, will you will you keep it safe with me, and will you help me do this? Um, yeah, which is, like, such a beautiful thing for someone to dive into. Um, and and also, like, Nashville's a, sm <laughs> it's a small town, and so to, to have the bravery on her side to be able to dive into a project like that with me was really, it was brave and um, really respectable, and I'm also really proud to either have written everything by myself or with one other person and um, to be able to do a project like this and and it's just two two women you know what I mean yeah yeah and then I will say Patrick Tracy who I've worked a lot with I did the short film with and he's mm -hmm. just an incredible he's an incredible creative in general and he's kind of been a creative director for me in a lot of ways so he he did this whole film with me as well yeah, I um, we heard about how the images were coming to you when they came to you after you'd actually written most of the music and you start to see the images. That's uh, I love hearing about that. And something that was interesting to me, because you're a a, a singer predominantly, a songwriter, but the use of silence Ooh. was really powerful, yeah. and the use of just sound <laughs> silence and space to convey the loneliness. I thought that was really, so. Did, the were echo those, of the footsteps. Yeah, were like, those the images that were coming to you when you were thinking? I mean, there were certain things that we added in after for more of that, and then the certain things that were important to me on the front end. Like I wanted to have walking through a very museum-esque house that it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's probably in AD, but it's cold. And it's 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 not comfortable. There's not a comfortable couch in sight, you know. Um, so I wanted the footsteps to sound like it is bouncing off every wall in this museum house. And I wanted um, there there is a moment in Mountain with a View, the first song, where in the record it keeps going, but then you know it says one day you'll ask me was it over for you, and then there's a break, and we added that in because I was like that's that we need a second here to feel it like mm. this is these are the feelings these are the important lines these are the things and so there's those throughout the whole project and some of them were premeditated and some some after mm -hmm. am i talking too much no okay okay <laughs> no okay um so <laughs> i'm a director <laughs> you can keep going <laughs> i'm a director and that's what I yeah, do. Yeah, you are. I stand there and I, and I kind of go, go over there, cut, action, whatever. I've always been impressed by actors that direct themselves. I'm like, how the hell do you do that? But you, Kelsey, you were singing, you were acting, you were directing, you were doing the whole thing, mm -hmm. um, carrying that load on your shoulders. Tell me about it. Well, I... <laughs> I just had a really strong vision for for what I lived it so I think it's different I can't imagine doing what you do like directing this beautiful story that you believe in that you relate to but it's not necessarily your exact story you know 
that's a different art form. I would have to learn that and study that. And uh, it wouldn't take you very long. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm fascinated, but I um, it was mine. It was my story, and so it was really important for me to be the one to tell it. And I think with music, you know, it's a sense. It's the sense of hearing, but like adding things visually, it it gives you more perspective and it helps you understand things differently or deeper. And um, I couldn't, I've known Patrick for years and we've collaborated on so many things. I couldn't have him tell that story. I couldn't have him know the moments of silence. I couldn't have, you know what I mean? Like it had, I felt like it had to be me. I had that responsibility to like bring it home. You know, the emotions are just so strong. I'm sure we all felt it kind of coming off the screen, those powerful emotions. How could you direct and sing and act and go through, go so deep? I and mean, how did that, I um, must have really Disassociation. Run you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at it. <laughs> it's really scary. Um, yeah, no, you for must have been exhausted. <laughs> I mean, all just the time. Like, <laughs> all the time. No, I for sure, I I can compartmentalize really well. Um, and that is on trauma. <laughs> I but I I honestly I think I think I believed in what we were doing so much that day that I, I didn't I could connect to the feelings enough to be in the moments, but there wasn't even a point in the whole day that I cried. Um, which is crazy because if you know me, I cry a lot. I just, I think I really, I wanted to honor the stages of this record and the stages of each song visually. And um, there's a moment in, in Just Married, which I, that's the biggest screen I've ever seen this on. So I was over there just like, wow. Um, <laughs> but there's one moment in the plates where you can see that I, I started to well up. It was the first take of that song. And that was the only part in the day where I really felt like I might lose it. But I didn't, um, and that was, that's the part in the story too, where I felt like I might lose it. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think it was just really disassociation. There's one question that I know fans everywhere, all over the world, are dying to ask, and I'm going to be the one okay. to ask it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else on this project, or I'll be done? <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'll say this project is no longer mine it is very much so ours that has happened I have felt it happen I have watched it happen since February every show from Manchester playing Penthouse for the first time to Phoenix where I just ended my tour um and I realized because of that, that um, I needed to listen. And when you said, we need Yasher okay, <laughs> I needed to listen. And when you said, if we don't get a live healed version of Penthouse, we are boycotting you. I said, her loud and clear, baby. And when you said, Kelsey, respectfully but not interlude being 45 seconds is illegal <laughs> i said all right you're so right and there's more to the story leave me again leave me again was never the last song so so tell me will so. you play us well, something. Rolling up the welcome mat for good comes out August 11th. <laughs> it has all the things that you have asked for. It has all the things that we have sung on tour together. It has all of the things that, um, <laughs> that we've kind of discovered. I uh, I mentioned earlier that um, Penthouse is kind of the song that's 
made everything be everything, kind of. Um, we started it in Manchester. It was the first song I decided to play from this project and uh, played it on SNL. And then, <laughs> which is stupid. And um, and then every every night on tour, it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of felt, I don't know, like deeper and richer and fuller and then evolved and lyrics changed and then I was like on my knees singing it every night. I don't know. And now there's like people making fun of me on TikTok for it. Imagine that. Um, it's just, no, it's funny. I don't care. Um, but it's just, it's it's really become kind of the song for me that I'll look back on this whole project and be like, man, thank God for that song. It's been really a new experience for, for me um, to be on just the receiving end of a song completely changing meaning and having a full different emotional feeling from when I wrote it to when I sing it now. And I really, I really deeply thank you for that, deeply. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions? This is, this is like, like I said before we announced rolling up the welcome mat for good, um, this has been uh, since I put it out. It's been you. It's been about you. It's been like for you. And so what can what do you want to know? <laughs> Hit me. Wait, there's a microphone. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I don't actually have like a question. That's I just want to say thank you because oh. I also was going through a breakup during all of this and uh, I'm healed now, so thank you. You feeling good? We're feeling good. We're, we're feeling, feeling better. We're feeling and we're better. We're working on getting to feeling great, but you know. That's right. That's so. I'll join you. Thank we're you. We're all working on it. Because you really helped We're me all doing it, our so best, so baby. That's all. I love you. Or are we just tossing it down? Sure, oh, that's fine. Okay. I like that. Oh, I wanted it. Well, first of all, thank you. We saw you in uh, Santa Barbara and I went viral on TikTok because of you. So, thank you. Um, second, the butter. You said everything was planned, and I understand, like, Taylor Swift influenced us all with the, with the <laughs> Easter eggs and whatnot, but was the butter left out to soften <clears throat> or not? Because it looks like in that thing, it should be softened, right? Mm -hmm. But was the butter, like, was it on purpose not softened? Or was that like a... I had to spread it. Yeah. <laughs> I got to be honest, the butter was not a metaphor. <laughs> so... I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not TS level at that. Only she is. But yeah. Now I need to go back and make the butter mean something. <laughs> Damn it. Um uh yeah. Hit me. Do you want a microphone? You don't have to use one. Okay. Um uh I um Your braids are so cute. <laughs> Thanks. Um I know that making an album like this takes a lot of vulnerability and it's even more so when you're putting it out and you don't know how it's gonna be received, especially because your relationship was very public. Um, so I wanted to ask in moments of doubt when it wasn't just writing the songs, but it was you're in the process, you're about to release it, all of that build up, were there moments of like doubt or insecurity? And if so, how did you find the bravery and then sustain that bravery even when it was obviously pretty scary to put it out there? Can I also answer this with no phones? Okay. Um, I already did the scary thing. The scary thing wasn't making the record. You know what I mean? So I think just writing about the scary thing made it less scary. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me. Yeah, sure. A every, anyone, everyone. <laughs> I took my shoes off, I'm chilling. So lucky. Um, I'm interested in the issue of like categorization and how like madly people try to categorize you as like you're not country enough, or you're not yeah. pop enough. Like, yeah. what is she? Yeah, I don't know why we have to do this to women, but I wonder like how that weighs on you emotionally. I wonder what kind of pressure you get on that front from the industry, like to be one or the other. And I wonder about in your writing process, like when you sit down to write, are you hearing like, this is a pop song or this is mm. a country song? So can you just speak to that a little? I love that question. It's, that's so real and I've thought about it a lot. I've lost sleep over it. Um, my, my answer is like, 
I grew up on a farm in East Tennessee and my first concert was Britney Spears. I've never shied away from either. Um, like, I moved to Nashville and respectfully not LA because I wanted to be a country artist. That's where I found that my songwriting and my music fit. Um, not in a traditional sense, but in a sense of like the storytelling and some of the sonics that I grew up on, right? Um, I love music. I like, I listen to everything. I grew up on everything. Um, I will never replace a beat drop with a banjo for the sake of making it fit into a genre, ever. I never have. Um, but what I believe deeply is that I'm a country artist at my core and that I have dug my heels into a town that I respect the, um, the art of so much. Um, and so will I play and experiment and evolve? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> like, but I'll always be a country artist in my heart, yeah. Um, one, two more, uh, hit me. Yeah. Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I guess I didn't need one. I'm a teacher, so I could have just projected my <laughs> voice, right? Um, so I had one thing to say and then one question. Is that okay? Yeah, hit me. Okay, cool. So the first thing I wanted to say is I was teaching students with severe emotional disturbances in South Central LA and had to quit my job because it was literally killing me. Mm. And um, I just want you to know that the EP saved my life because after I quit my job, I drove down the PCH for two hours and that's all I listened to because you probably know this, the PCH is healing, it's therapy. Um, but the day after I did that, I got a phone call from my old boss who I'm not even joking said, um, you blindsided us. Whoa. And I was like, can I just send you a song? <laughs> no, I didn't, but I just wanted to say send thank you. <laughs> I should have, I really should have. But um, I just wanted to say thank you because like, yeah, thank you for getting me to a point where I can be here. So thank you for that. Um, Thanks for saying that. <laughs> Um, and now I'm teaching at a different school and I'm happy, so thank Good, you. Good, <laughs> vibe, that's all that matters, that's awesome. Um, and then, okay, this question. That also, just by the way, that takes you like showing up for yourself, so it's not me, that's you. <laughs> thank you. Period. I, thank you. Yeah. Um, the question I had, and you can definitely not answer this, but um, I, <laughs> I noticed a lot of little things, and I noticed that um, Just Married was like never on the set list. Was that on purpose? And because I also noticed that was one of the few ones you only wrote yourself. So I wondered if it was just too much to sing for other people. Um, I just, maybe one day I will. It wasn't super intentional. I just like, Mountain with a View, I could not wait to play live. And um, and obviously Penthouse kind of had its thing and the blind side had its thing and then we added interlude for the last leg of tour. I don't know. I And Leave Me Again, that's, that's a lot of ballads. I was like, I'm going to spare the crowd and not play another tearjerker. <laughs> you what? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah we're going to hang in a second for sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's not super intentional, but I probably, I probably won't play it. One more? Yeah. Right here? You got, you want to, you don't want to, oh, 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 okay. What was happening? That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, felt, felt and heard. Hi. Hi. Um, so in Blindsided, when, um, you know, there's kind of the little, it almost sounds like a voice note where it's like, oh, it's not news to you, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. What is that from? Like, was that like? taken from an actual like argument or like was it this like was a this was a no fly question on all of my all of the interviews I've done um oh, okay <laughs> so this is fun <laughs> I'm on the spot no it's fine um 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 woo. you don't have to answer it well it's real that's all I'll tell you it's real okay period yeah okay <laughs> Woo, scary. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, is this not I got it now. Uh, so I think I'm going to ask you to pretty much 
me as it has, I'm sure, many people. And in a very personal way, it came out at almost the perfect time because I had struggled for, I want to say, almost a year and a half, if not more, if what I should do in my relationship. And it finally came to a point where I needed to choose me, and I did. But um, so I especially, like, with Leave Me Again or... I kind of felt lost in myself, and I didn't realize how much that actually rained home until I actually left. And then mm. I really felt all the emotions, and I was like, I said this, but I don't know if I believed it, mm. but now it really is true. Um, and it's, it's funny that you talk about the situation driving to a wedding, because mm. I had a first wedding that I'd ever been to immediately after, and I thought I was in a good place, and it wasn't until leaving there that I was like, I'm not. Like, I'm not as okay as I thought I was. and. So I guess my question is, aside from, you know, music being your healing process, is there anything that you did for yourself that really got you to that point? And, you know, for some people that aren't quite where you're at yet, and I have days where I'm like, I'm doing really great, and I have days where I'm like, is this the right decision or did I just really mess up my life? Mm. And what are some things that you would recommend for people going in similar situations to do for themselves? Ooh, okay. Okay. I well, I want to say like, and I and I mean this really gently. Like I am in therapy. I'm not a therapist, so whatever I say is just my experience, um, because it's different for everyone, right? Um, I will say for me, I think like when you make a life change, whatever it may be, big life change that you have been mulling on, and you have taken the time and the heart to reflect on, and you made that decision. Um, I think there's a difference between t feeling sad. Here's what I'll say. I think two things can be true. I think you can be sad and know it's the right thing at the same time. There's space for both. And so I think um, I think honoring yourself is a really hard thing, especially as a woman, to, um, to kind of stand up for yourself and do something that feels unconventional. Um, in culture or your family or whatever it may be. And so there's going to be a lot of doubts that happen when you finally make that choice. And as long as you can stay in the reason that you made the choice and let yourself go through the process of all the feelings, the really big feelings, while still knowing it was the right thing, I think like that's, that's, like, that's power and that's healing and that's forward motion. And every day is different, you know? The advice I would give is like, don't compare your journey to anyone else's. People are going to say you're dating too soon. People are going to say you shouldn't have done what you did. People are going to say you're going to hell, whatever it is. Like, I'll see you there. <laughs> um, <laughs> with that <laughs> really dark ending, sorry. Um, I want to say we really tried to make, we're doing three of these events. This is obviously the first one. We wanted to find ways to make each of them special. So um, there's a T-shirt that's only we only printed printed enough for this tonight. It's um, where did I put it? I lost it. It's gone. It's here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So tonight it's um, one of the new lyrics from Interlude that you heard. So it says, "Hindsight says, I was right." So that's out there. If you want to vibe with that, um, the vinyl, we finally have them. They're out there. Um, and uh, Julianne, you're incredible. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Grammy Museum, for having, for having us and for um, just being able to give space to especially the visual aspect of this project that I haven't really gotten to do yet. Thank you guys for all the support, and um, I'm ready to roll it up for good. I really am. So thank you so much, so, so much. Okay.